Making a drawing comes natural to some, but is difficult for many. Drawing on AD's home computer is something completely different. And for a long time, joysticks and light pens seemed to be the only way. Then came a device called the Koala Pad and changed everything. This video is about a modern recreation of that device. A device you can use on both your C64 and PC. If you want to draw something on the screen of your 8-bit computer, the light pen seems the most obvious choice. That is until you actually start using it. Because then you'll realize that this wonderful device is highly impractical for serious drawing sessions. First of all, it requires the screen to be as white or bright as possible. Only this will guarantee a decent pen position signal. And if the bright light doesn't bother you, then the awkward position will. Because drawing on a vertical screen for a long period of time will be very tiresome. Although, there were attempts to use the light pen in combination with a tilted screen. But this turned out to be non-successful. The joystick is a simple device owned by almost anyone with an 80s computer. Therefore, many programs supported it. But making a simple drawing with a joystick is no fun at all. Anything that isn't a horizontal or vertical line is a problem. Therefore the art of making a nice drawing on your computer essentially came down to being patient. As each pixel needed to be placed by careful manipulation of the cursor. Then, in 1983, the Koala Pad came out. Although similar devices did exist. The new touchpad technology inside the Koala Pad allowed for a cheap device for the average user. So thanks to the Koala Pad, drawing in the digital domain suddenly could become affordable and fun. But despite being successful in many ways, it didn't cause the revolution it deserved. Maybe because the average user did not know about it, or simply didn't care. Now decades later, modern pixel artists or retro computer enthusiasts might be tempted to buy an old Koala Pad online. Though if you find one, it will always be a bit of a gamble. Because many koala pads do not work as well as they used to do, three decades ago. Now wouldn't it be nice, if there was a new kind of device? A device that could work like the good old koala pad, but can also function like a mouse. Because if you can make a touchpad act like a mouse, then you can benefit from the huge library of mouse compatible software. And wouldn't it be nice if you could use this device on your PC just as easy as you could use it on your retro computer? Well, there now is. It is a device you can build yourself, using modern components. It is the open source project called Comopad. Designed to act like a Koala Pad and a 1351 mouse. Because it is intended for use with your Commodore computer and as a pad, it is called the Comopad. But you can also connect it to your PC as a USB device and use it like a two-button mouse. And this even includes the scroll wheel functionality. This is how it works. The connection used determines its function. So when you plug in the joystick port connector, it will go into retro mode. And depending on its setting, it will act like a koala pad, joystick, or 1351 mouse. This setting is indicated by a small speaker at the bottom of the device. If it beeps once after power up, it is in koala pad mode. And if it beeps three times, it is in 1351 mode. If you want to change its mode of operation, all that needs to be done is to hold the appropriate button during power-up. This new setting is automatically stored. Meaning that the next time you power on your computer, or connect the device, it will go directly into this mode. As this demonstration shows, the Koala Painter software can use it without any problems. Which makes this modern implementation of the Koala Pad a viable option for drawing on your Commodore 64. Geos, the famous 1986 operating system, capable of working perfectly fine on systems with only 64 kilobytes of RAM, was intended for use with a mouse. But, with the Comopad, set to 1351 mouse mode, you no longer need a mouse. Geos also has a great painting program, called GeoPaint. So if you don't like the Koala Painter user interface, then perhaps GeoPaint, might be something, for you. The Camo Pad can also work in USB mode. 
meaning that you can use it on your PC. Just plug it in and it will function like an ordinary two-button mouse. And by pressing the middle button while moving the pen vertically along the pad, you activate the scroll wheel function. Also just like on your C64, you can use the combo pad with every mouse-based application. But now with the convenience and accuracy of a pen-based device, suddenly MS Paint feels like a whole new tool. By disassembling it, it becomes clear how it is constructed. The case is very simple, made from scraps of wood and MDF. All held together with lots of glue. Because it is sanded, heavily primed, sanded again and painted with an automotive glossy paint, it no longer looks like a wooden box. The touchpad is gently held in place by the frame and lots of supporting material, which was mostly required to fill the gaps. The touchpad is a cheap four-wire resistive pad, intended for use with a 7-inch LCD screen. The electronics consist of a prototyping PCB board based around an Arduino Pro Micro. A set of transistors provide for a safe connection to the C64 joystick port. And a simple piezo speaker is used to provide acoustic feedback during startup and configuration. The touchpad is connected to the PCB via a flat cable connector. A diode is used to separate the C64 power supply from the USB power. This keeps everything safe, in case both cables are connected at the same time. And finally, a simple joystick extension cable is used to connect the combo pad to the C64. The Camo Pad has one more mode. It is the joystick mode. Although it seemed like a nice idea during development, it really sucks in real life. The complete lack of movement limitations make any game a difficult game. Although, a sales pitch could be that it can create a whole new gaming experience. But honestly, it is not recommended to be used. And if there was to be a award for the world's worst joystick, then this mode would most certainly be a winner.